The Nine Years Podcast is brought to you in association with Season Master and The Window Workshop. Hello everybody and welcome to the latest edition of the Nine Years Podcast. I am Nick Draper, joined as always by the face of the BBC Sport website, Mr Stuart Deacons. And joining us this week, delighted to say Lee Brown is with us to talk about his time at the club Lee, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us. How are you getting on? Yeah, no, all good. Enjoying the retirement, I must be honest. Um, yeah, no, enjoying it at the moment. So that's what it is. We, it is that you have now retired from playing completely. Are you looking yeah, to not stay in football in you know, it's not, I, haven't, I haven't announced anything or said anything. It's just sort of how it's sort of to plan out and how it is going, really. Um Nothing really too official, just low key. Um, yeah, come away from it. Whereabouts are you based now then? Uh, what living? I, yeah. I li- I, I've always lived in Kingswood, so I'm still here, still uh-huh. in the same spot. So um, been here for like six years now. Okay, not missing the commute to uh, New Morden every every morning. <laughs> no, nah, do you know what? It was a dream the commute to New Morden, especially after Portsmouth. Um, uh, yeah, commuting there for four years, so. The new Mordor one was a doddle. What did you think of the training ground down at New Morden? It's okay. Obviously, it, it, it serves its purpose, but obviously, it's it's not great condition uh, down there. But I think you just get on with it. Really, it's, it's, people make out it, it's really glamorous, but it's it, it's it's really not. But it, it serves a purpose. It does the job. Um, does it need work? Yes, it definitely does. Especially if you want to progress throughout the league and and go higher um especially somewhere where you are every day it could do with a little bit of work for sure see new Morden and berylands it's my ends okay this is where i am based this is where i live my life uh for my sins did you get out into the town much did you see the surrounding areas at all <laughs> yeah no no, I, no no i know new Morden quite well obviously i'm i'm, I'm local really I, I grew up in croydon um moved to wallerton dad owns a garage in mitcham so all around that area, I know well, you know, my mum mum and dad lived in Ching for a large period of time. So it's all around that sort of area. So Lee, how did you, um, how have you found your sort of retirement? Um, have you, has it quickly got, obviously you have a routine as a footballer, don't you? So have you quickly got a new routine now? No, I've got zero routine, but I'm actually quite like not having a routine, if that makes sense. Um, I'm in a privileged position where I, I've, um, set up to after football so my mind is more than occupied so um does help massively i must admit I must, if i didn't have that i think i'd be really struggling with with the day to day but i've got more than enough to think about every day so it's been quite an easy transition so far um i don't know if i'm in the honeymoon period or not um where i'm eating doing what i want and that might wear off but at the minute i'm i'm enjoying it do you miss the day to day sort of seeing the lads? And obviously, I know you've got stuff on, you know, you've got, you've got business outside of football, but do you miss seeing the lads and that sort of match day? Yeah, build up? no, I do. Yeah, I think I think that never lose you in terms of that buzz um, and just being in a change room. You know, I think I think where you, that's all you've known for twenty years, you've left school and sort of gone straight into a change room. It's so routine. It's so regiment uh, for so many years. You've had to. What people don't realise is the sacrifices you've had to make for 20 years and how strict you've probably been and the, the subconsciousness you've had in your brain to never eat that extra little bit or you can't have that or you can't do that just because you're you're looking after yourself because you don't want to embarrass yourself on a Saturday, really. Um, so now that's all gone. It does feel a bit strange. It does feel a bit free and stress-free at the moment, a bit too much because I'm eating what I want. Um, but enjoying it, um, but definitely miss the change room for sure. I don't think I don't think you'll ever not miss it if that makes sense. And as most people know, I did I did like that environment, and I still do. It's definitely I was going to say it's a definitely a lot quieter um, without yourself and obviously Harry Bell and and that sort of thing. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a lot quieter. I'm not too sure if it's better, but it's definitely a lot quieter. Yeah, I can imagine it is, yeah. But look, the lads are doing fantastic so far and it's brilliant. So long may it continue. 
Yeah, and it's early days in the season. Have you been to any, not speaking about Wimbledon, but football in general, any games this season? Do you go and watch it? Yeah, no, the only one I went to was um, Wimbledon game, the opening okay. game of the season, really. All right. So yeah. I went to that, really enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, no, I've, I've, that's the only one I've been to, really. Um, obviously, going again on Saturday and no, looking really looking forward to it. When you go to a game like that game, for example, do you arrange to meet up with any of the old players or anything like that? Do you go down into the change room at all? Do you get that opportunity? Or is it more sort of after the game you might get a chance to speak yeah, to Yeah, no, them? look, I still speak to quite a few of the boys now, really. Just the odd text and Reevesy and Omar pop round when they stand down and they come over for a cup of tea. Um, so I'm still, I'm still in contact with most of the boys, you know, and, and, and a few of the staff. So I'm still getting my little fix of the lads, as we say. Um, but yeah, no, it's nice. It's nice to go to a game and, and see some old faces and dip your toes still in, if that makes sense. Mm. So it's going to be interesting. So obviously you've kindly agreed to join us on Saturday as our sort of special guest, guest of honour. Um, I remember I called that, so that's called guest of honour somebody and they like looked at me and thought, <laughs> okay. Um, but obviously you're going to be our special guest for the game on Saturday. Um, I guess you're looking forward to that. Yeah, enjoying it, especially because it's MK Dons as well. I do... I... Yeah, no, it's sort of games like that which you do start being, oh, I miss it now. Just a little bit of a tear up. Do you know what I mean? That's the games you miss. You don't miss the boring ones away at bloody wherever on a Tuesday night. But you can one say like, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but ones like this at home on Saturday, you definitely miss. Um, you definitely miss. And I don't think they'll ever lose you. They'll, they'll ever leave you. Um, so, yeah, but looking forward to just being a spectator and watching it and getting it getting involved from afar. I have to delve into it. Obviously, now we just chatted about the game. Um, one of the things I noticed in that 1-0 win was just that there was a, le a different level of, let's call it shithousery, um, before the game and stuff like that. Did Was that really um, was that really important to really get amongst them? Because obviously that game, I've said to Nick before, you know, years and years, we've sometimes played it a bit too nice. Um, but that day with yourself, Alex Pierce. Harry Pell felt like there was a bit of shithousery going on to get amongst yeah, them. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. I think where that come from, I remember, um, I remember their, the game at their place, and I was on the bench that day. Probably, I think Harry maybe as well, and Alex. I think we were all on the bench that day, and obviously, um, we obviously took a bit of a hiding. Really, um, we were too nice that day. We were too that nice that day, and against a team like that who played nice football and especially in a derby that, and the magnitude that it was, that's the last thing we needed to be. Um, and I feel like that was, when it comes to the home fixture, I think that memory and obviously them celebrating after and doing the cheers to the crowd and how that made us feel, especially even if I wasn't even playing or even the boys who were playing, how that made us feel was horrendous. So I think that was all built up leading into that home game. And then obviously we got the chance to play. Um, I was playing at the time on the home fixture, so it was it was nice to be involved and playing, and sort of trying to have an impact what we could. But I think that come from them over celebrating at their place and and enjoying it a bit too much. I don't know about you guys, but I'm just I still get goosebumps just talking about it right now. Okay, for that moment of when we scored the goal, of course your assist on that Saturday. Can you put into words? the feeling when Ronas, Ronan Curtis puts the ball away? Yeah, no, nah, it's, it's one of the good ones. It's one of the good memories. You know, I think um, that's what you're in the game for, you know. There's a lot of, especially in League Two, there's a lot of crap games. There's a lot of boring <laughs> games, which you just got to get through and get the result. You don't play too well, but just get the result. But then games like that, and especially when you come out on the good side of it, like we did, and scoring last minute like we did, they're the ones you live for and that's they're the buzzes that we all crave and probably why we turn up every week trying to look for that buzz. But yeah, no, what what a feeling and, and what a what a memory for everyone who was part of it. Do you remember the celebrations? Because um I'll be truthful, when we scored the goal, I I actually run down to a tunnel remembering that I should have been down there getting some footage. Um <laughs> and I missed I missed it and it wasn't until the day no, after I watched it. Yeah, I missed it all. Um and it wasn't until a day after that I saw the celebrations. There was so much going on in that celebration. Um, oh, there's limbs everywhere. 
But that's what it was good about it, wasn't it? <laughs> well, what were you doing at that point? Because obviously, just, yeah, I think a lot of people were surprised to see you that far up in that, you know, late on in the game, wasn't it? So were you just too knackered to get over there? What, what was your celebration like? I think, I, I think, if I remember rightly, probably no one even noticed it. But I think I'd set up on the left-hand side. So I was, I obviously crossed, but everyone ran off to the right. But as I was running over to the crowd, I was just abusing all the MK Dons players on the floor. <laughs> so it took me a little bit while to get over there, but when I got over there, I enjoyed it. <laughs> but yeah, it, it probably didn't get noticed, but I always remember just, just probably doing something stupid. I can't remember what I was saying, but I was, enjoying the, I was enjoying the journey from where I was to the crowd. <laughs> That's the greatest answer. I wasn't expecting that at all. <laughs> yeah, um, no, I remember it. Because <laughs> there is a, a, when you look at the video, if three of their players just fall over, just literally fall with down their knees, don't yeah, they? Yeah, and I think I've visited all three of them. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember what? Do you remember what exactly you said? I think I just randomly started screaming in their face, but yeah, <laughs> it just, I think that sometimes when you're in that moment, it just takes over and just whatever happens happens, sort of thing. But that is what I what we all crave, you know, it's just um, <laughs> on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm probably not like that, but in their moments, you've got to see. They don't, they don't come along often. <laughs> <laughs> well, we saw, Stu, at the end of the game as well, when the players came back in the tunnel, you know, we were still, we were quite loud coming back into the changing room afterwards as well, making sure that the away dressing room were aware that we were there as well. Um, what happened on the pitch at the final whistle? Oh, I just remember being near the goal there end because we were that end. Yeah. But yeah, I just always, I always will remember that home game, um, the away game, sorry, when they're at home oh, mm. and after the games, the scenes they created. And it was naughty, really. If, they, if they'd done it with a bit more dignity, then it probably wouldn't have caused what we'd done, if that makes sense. But mm -hmm. yeah. I just remember getting vapes, pound coins, everything just chucked at me. But just because the crowd were behind me, but it was all good laugh, wasn't it? What did, um, obviously, for that experience that you had um, at their place when we lost 3 1, was that Johnny Jackson's team talk done? Was there any, because I was, you know, in that dressing room, there are, there were strong characters in that dressing room. I can imagine you led it. I don't, I reckon, I'd imagine Johnny didn't have to do too much. No, no, he didn't, he didn't have to, he didn't have to say much, you know. I think, I think we all knew, we all knew, we all knew. So sometimes as a manager, you don't have to say much. And, I think sometimes less is more in a situation like that. So, yeah, no, I don't think he had to say much, especially especially in the home game. We want to talk about your your, your full time with us as well, a few other moments during your time with us. Before we get on to that, you just mentioned they stood in touch with a couple of players. Jake Rees is one of those players. I wanted just to ask you, because Jake started the season fantastically well this year. Um, he's our captain goes back a long time with the club. Was he someone that you were aware of before you joined? Or he joined us, didn't he, in the summer, in your first yeah. summer with us? Um, was he a player that you were aware of much before that? Yeah, look, I played against Reevesy loads of times. You know, when we're at my career, I've come against Reevesy a number of times. And I think you you know players throughout your careers, but never played with him, never really spoke to him. But obviously he come in and he knew the club well. And... He was just one of the older players who, who we all started gravitating to. And you joined, as I say, about six months before him. You'd had about oh, something like over 100 games with with Portsmouth before you joined us. What what attracted you to AFC Wimbledon? I think, I'll be honest with you, I was never going to leave Portsmouth. Um, I never would have left Portsmouth, if I'm honest, for, for any other team. Um but it got to a point at Portsmouth where the commute was probably too much. I didn't. I would have carried on doing it, um, and I still had a contract there. But obviously, I knew. I think Ollie Palmer at the time um, was speaking to Mark Robinson at the time and sort of hung the carrot there to me and said, "Look, come down. We need you. You could really help. We've got a really young squad." And then from that conversation, it just got my mind ticking. And as I say, I always knew I wanted to to probably finish my career at Wimbledon um, for a variety of reasons. So, yeah, I don't think I would have left Portsmouth for any other club, if I'm honest. Yeah, I was going to ask you actually if it was if it was hard to leave 
Portsmouth, it seemed a club you had great affinity with. Um, you actually played against us just before you signed for us, I think, if I remember correctly. And um, yeah, if you want to say that I've scored two as well, that well, that, I, just... that, no, I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to drop it, but I did score two that day. I thought yeah, that we're... might come up at some point. <laughs> We were, we were we were remember to be fair, and also Ronan Curtis scored the first the first oh, one or second he? one. Yes, <laughs> when I look back, I'm like crikey, you can see where our recruitment went. Uh, yeah, that yeah. Sort of <laughs> side of it. To be fair, when we signed you, we were like we got an attacking left fullback. It was a really really good signing for us. You joined at a really challenging point, though. Mm. Um, really challenging, yeah. Probably the toughest but, of my career, really. Were you aware of that before? Because obviously, let's be fair, whenever you sign for a club, they're always going to tell you the positive sides of it. They're always going to do that. Were you aware, Did it sort of like sink in as to what you'd join? Because it was a really challenging time. No, I always thought we'd be all right. I always thought, especially in that January, I thought we'd be all right. I didn't really probably look too far into it in terms of squad depth and squad age and the experience of the whole squad in a whole, um, where I always thought we'd be all right, I'd be able to add something, I'd be able to do something. Um, but to be honest, it was probably probably too much, really. And it was evident that season that we, we ended up getting relegated, to be honest, for, for that reason. Yeah, I wanted to ask your thoughts on that when we look back at that relegation and well, and you mentioned the age of the squad and the inexperience of the squad, but before we sort of delve deeper into those ones, do you think sometimes in football, just some things are are written in the stars? For instance, 93rd minute winner against Milton Keynes, for example, at Plough Lane, like um, there were games that season where, well, we, 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 we threw away leads quite often. And yeah. even then you get to like the, the last away game of the season at Fleetwood Town and we won the lot with two minutes to go. And we give away a free yeah. kick for a goalkeeper touching the ball twice. At free. I mean, have you ever... I've never experienced something like that happening at a game before. To be no, I, no I, I, think, I think every team will get relegated. We'll probably go through the season and go, remember that game when we conceded last minute? Or you remember that if we only hung on there? Mm. I think every team would probably say that. But I'm a big believer in... You just weren't... We just weren't good enough. We just weren't good enough over the course of however many games. We just weren't good enough. And if we were, we would have we would have won enough games and we certainly would have won one game in whatever amount of games was, which is a crazy stat. Yeah. We clearly just was not good enough and it's just as simple as that. We just weren't good enough. Did the younger players in the squad, do you think they understood the gravity of the situation? So we had some very talented young, very, very talented young players. We had Jack Radoni, we had Ayuba Sal, uh, Luke McCormick at the time. But do you think it really dawned on them that we were actually, even up into the last sort of few weeks of the season when Mark Bowen comes in, do you think they really understood the, the situation? Probably not. And, 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 the, and the, the tough thing is, is when you are down there, it's how people deal with pressure in different ways. Mm. So for these young lads, they probably had never been in this sort of pressure cooker before in terms of the magnitude of getting relegated, they probably didn't probably didn't know how to handle that situation. If you speak to these players now, three, four, five years on in their career, they'd probably deal with that situation a lot better and they've got more experience um, to deal with it. But I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I think it was a, um, a combination of a lot of things which it always is when a team get relegated. I don't think it can be pinned on just the young lads. I don't think it can be combined, um, pinned on just a manager or just this player or that player. It's a combination of so many different things and it can never just be one thing. I think it's unfair to say it was all the young lads. So I actually don't think it was, you know. Did the experienced boys do enough? That's what, and probably not. Like it, I think it's a combination of a lot of things and that is why you go on on runs of X amount of pains and not winning a game. It can't be just one thing or one person. It's a combination of a lot of things. Yeah, and before we, obviously we're going to move away from that, one thing that me and Nick were uh, remembering at the time, and we, we never had a chance to ask you, and it wasn't really something we were going to ask, but uh, when we lost away at Plymouth, there seemed to be a, a moment where I think the older, so yourself and Ben Hennigan come out with interviews that were quite um, strong. Was that was that like a not a last stand, but was that you just trying to find any way to get a message out and 
Or was that yeah, was pure I, frustration? I, I, I think... I think I always said it was all too nice. For me, where I'd come from, I'd never had it so nice. And I think growing up, I'd never had it so nice. And all of a sudden, it was very nice. So for me, from my point of view, why that interview happened, and it probably summed up how much it hurt people and how big of a deal it was, it probably summed up what I was saying was right, that it actually did hurt people, and people got really upset about this silly little interview where... I've probably said worse at other clubs, but it didn't. It didn't really have that much of a thing, if that makes sense. Um, but it just probably summed up how soft we actually was as a group and as a and a squad. Um, that it actually upset a lot of people. Where really, it was the reality, and the reality is we did get relegated. Said about soft as a squad is the word used there. I guess that just contributes to, I mean, there were games where, like you say, you can look back to single games and say, if only we could hold on there and there. We did lose an extraordinary number of leads. Is that just the mentality, the mentality to see games out? Is that is that yeah, a mentality of the or is that just an experience? Or... Yeah, I think it's a combination of all loads of things. You know, I think it's one game, it would be an individual mistake. One thing would be we, we switch, up, switch off as a team. I think it's always a combination of a lot of things, but then things were happening for a reason. What that reason was, was, I don't know. Um, someone would say that it's soft. Some people would say it's concentration. It could be a, it could be an individual error. It's a combination of lots of things, but it kept happening. And, and that's why we ended up getting relegated. And we also lost, you mentioned it earlier, when you joined the club, Ollie Palmer as well. A, look, Ollie Palmer is a, is a vocal point in any team. Um, you can see he's still playing well now at Wrexham. Yeah. Um, he, he's a vocal point, and and when you lose a vocal point and a number nine in your in in your squad, especially when you've got young young athletic players around him, they sort of need that vocal point. Mm -hmm. And I think if you didn't lose him, we probably wouldn't have got relegated. If I'm honest, because just to occupy defenders, I think we didn't really replace him, um, really. So yeah, it, as I say, it's a, it's a it's a combination of many things of why a team gets relegated, and that could be one of one of the the combinations and one of the reasons why maybe we did get relegated. So when we were doing our research, um, one of the things I come across was you making your debut for Bristol Rovers. Um, you come across Wimbledon quite a lot, obviously naturally because you know south of the south of the yeah. south of the river as they say on that sort of side of it so i saw you at hazen reading you at hazen yedding who we had many encounters for um that was when i've looked at your career one thing i've i've saw is that you've had relegations and promotions but to me that looks like you're a very resilient character um because in terms of bristol rovers relegation of bristol rovers but then back to back promotions would you say that sort of like giving you that resilience and um to to come back from them sort of situations. Yeah, I, th I think everything in any career, in any line of work, I think when you get a knockback, is how you react. You know, people get let go from jobs, and it's how they react and how they. And I think when you take a knock, is how the resiliency. Obviously, over time, it builds up resilience. You know, and how you deal with that. You look at players who probably got relegated that year, and they've kicked on their careers. Um, and done really well and you see other players who have never to be seen again so I think it is very much how you react in adversity um, especially as a footballer because look you go through as a kid I got released twice go under 14s under 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 11s under 12 or whatever it was at Arsenal got let go got let go at Southampton it it's how you respond, you know, and some some people respond in a positive way and some people go under and never to be seen again. And that's just that that's life and that's, a, that's, a, that's across any walk of life, I feel. So when we um, entered back into the Football League after winning at the um, City Manchester Stadium, the first game was Bristol Rovers. Uh, was it actually? I, I oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, it was my debut, yeah. Yeah, your debuts. We pumped yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's three two. It wasn't totally. <laughs> we were three 0 up, weren't we? We were three 0 up and then conceded two. 
Because <laughs> I remember going in at half time at 3 0, thinking we've cracked this, we're going to win the league. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Do you have any met? Obviously, I know it's going back a while, but that was obviously it was on Sky. Sky covered it. Yeah, it was our first game I remember back. it, yeah. Yeah. What was it? Because Kings Meadow was, a, let's be fair, for atmosphere, you were on top of people. Um, yeah. I can imagine. I can imagine that's your type of ground because you can't get yeah, away. No, from it, can you? I, I, I've, I've played there a few times. Um, but yeah, no, I like that hostile environment and a small, tight pitch. I liked it, um, but other players don't like it. So it's it, you know, it's, it's all different sort of characters and all different personalities in football. Um, so yeah, me personally, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed. I enjoyed playing there. Um, but yeah, no. It was a good one. What was Bristol Rovers like? Because um, when they got relegated, I must admit, I think me and Nick said at the time, we were doing a podcast at the time, it was a big club. I know you should never be about big clubs and getting relegated, but that was a big club to go down into the conference, wasn't it? Yeah, no, yeah, no. Very big club. For, for As I say, they they get 10,000. They were getting 10,000 in 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 the conference, you know, and we were going to like altering them away, selling out. It, it's a big club in, in the conference for sure. Um but what come with that was the pressure. So the pressure of being in the conference as a club, which is probably a League One club, um, but they're in the conference, you know, and, and it's got a really passionate fan base, really passionate fan base. That's one thing I would say about Bristol. As I say, if you're from Bristol, you either support Bristol Rams or you support Bristol City. Um, but it's a really passionate city um, for their football. So we're dropping down to the conference, and we're expected to beat Altrincham. We're expected to beat Braintrees. And the first five games, I think we lost and we drew. We didn't pick up a win for like five, six games. And I think Daryl Clark, the manager at the time, tells the story where they were posting posters at the training ground, sat Daryl Clark, get rid. Like literally, the pressure is was was high, you know. And it's a different it's a different thing you got to deal with as a player that sort of pressure of when you're expected to win every week, you should be winning three, four nil, but that wasn't the case in it. It was tough to start with really tough. Yeah. You see it all the time with clubs that go down into non-league and there's lots now currently there. Look at Oldham's and Hartlepool's and clubs like that, that will feel they should be in the football league. Took Luton many years to get back in. Uh, Notts County have been down there and those struggles with that pressure. Was it a similar situation at Portsmouth? Coming down into League Two, where the expectation is they were just going to bounce straight back up. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't play for them in League Two. I right. signed when they were in League One. So, but, but the same, even, the same applies. Even, even more than in League One. Yeah. you know, for, for four years we, we were expected to win every game three 0 Like, so you you'd gone from Bristol, where there's a really passionate fan base expected to win all the time, to a Portsmouth where they still think they should be in the Premier League. Like, it's a big club. The fan base is 18,000, 19,000 every week. And rightly so, you know, they've had Premier League football before and that's what they want. So, you're in League One and they're playing teams of a stature of Acker and Stanley and you're expected to win. You're expected to win 2 3 nil, and it should be easy. But if you've been in football long enough, you know it's never the case. <laughs> you see upsets every year in the FA Cup. It's never the case. Like, Every football game is hard. It's hard and you've got to put a lot of effort in to win every football match. Yeah, and I guess the same applied for sections of our fan base. So we, we went down in uh, 2022, Johnny Jackson comes in and immediately it's a case of, well, we're a freshly relegated team. We should be going straight back up out of this league. We should be back in le League One. We've got, you say, we've got a big stadium now. We've got 8,000 fans and whatever. But similar was that similar going on with us? that season um or was it a slightly different was it a, was it more because we needed a big long sort of turnaround in terms of structure and playing staff etc that maybe just yeah I, I, I didn't really feel that too much mm. obviously there was a little bit of it there's a little bit of it naturally you've been relegated every club think it should just they're gonna cruise the league below and you're gonna get promoted every every club thinks that i think and every su supporters think that but I feel like the core Wimbledon fan understood that we've just built a lovely new stadium and that needs paying for. Mm -hmm. And and the infrastructure of that and the, the repercussions of that comes with probably a lesser budget because um, they have got to pay off all this. 
So I think the core Wimbledon fan understand the process of we ain't got the biggest budget in in League Two. Um, we've got a good budget, but we ain't got the biggest league budget in League Two, and it and it ain't going to be that easy. I think the core Wimbledon fan would say that. Um, but look, there's always going to be expectation as you come down from a a league that you you're expected to go straight back up. But I I never think that's the case. I think it's harder that people think that. But reality is it's not like that. And once we adjusted being back into League Two, we went on a long unbeaten run before Christmas and then into the new year. Again, a little bit of a struggle in that second half of the season. You mentioned finances there. Probably squad depth was a problem for us because we had we had horrendous, horrendous luck with injuries in that second half of the season. When I look back at it now, I think there were times Stuber going up to Barrow away maybe with yeah. with that not being able to put a full bench together and things like that. But we then come again, uh Johnny Jackson's second season in charge. And I thought last season we had a really, really positive season. I thought it was. Uh, how did it feel being involved in it? Did it feel like there was a there's a momentum shift or an at- or a mood change? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think when there was ten games to go, we we're all looking at playoffs, and we we're all we we're all looking at that. And for us to to we're looking in that forward that we ain't looking behind us. We're all looking in front. So I think we to get ourselves in that position where. We were a couple of three, four, five games away from getting there and we were in the hunt all the way to the end, really. Um, I think it's a positive season in terms of where we was the, the season. As I say, we finished a lot higher. We look more solid as a squad. Um, and I'd like to think this year we go one step more um, and, and eventually get into the playoffs. And I think that's where this squad is at. I'm keen to quickly, before we move on, to discuss um, Ali Alhamadi. Um was he yeah. was he was he a cheat code in League Two? Because there was there was yeah. points when I'd be truthful. There was points when I didn't even bother celebrating his goals because he just knew when he got through. You just knew he was he was dangerous. But when he joined, what, did you feel that was because if you look at his career, uh, did you feel I, that was what he was going to do? I remember watching him in training, and I thought he's all right. He's all right. Like he's come from for me, he, he was Wickham reserves. He weren't really playing at Wickham, so naturally as a player, you go. Well, he's not a marquee signing. It's not like he was playing week in, week out at Wickham. He's come in, yeah, he looks right. He looks kind of sharp in training, but not not unbelievable. But that's how football goes, you know. I think sometimes you get comfortable as a player and momentum gets you and in confidence and confidence. Then you've got to run a games. And I think any player, if you've got confidence, especially as a striker, the world's your oyster, you know, especially if you've got the attributes that Ali's got. Um and as I say, he got a run of games with with his confidence, and he he was unplayable at times. And to get a move to the top end of the championship in January, it says it all really. Because I've seen good players have good six months and not get a move like that. Um, so it yeah. it shows you that we ain't all just thinking that. There's the people in the football world who know football, um, who who paid a lot of money and and give him the chance at the top end of the championship at the time. So when we look back at that season, um, we had a bit of a problem with penalty takers, didn't we? In terms of the amount of penalties we missed. Um, yeah. Was there any point when you were going to take over as seniority? Yeah, no, no, it did get mentioned. I just had to get on the pitch to start with. <laughs> <laughs> Do no, like no, that look, <laughs> Yeah, no, look, I always would take one. Um, I just think at the time there was, I don't know, it was just, no, it's, it's a bit of a weird one, really. Um because it always went on to the next person who you support. If if he gets his confidence up, he could do more than what I could probably do at yeah at left back or centre half or wherever I was playing. Um, so you'd always want them to do well and get their confidence up for the for the longer picture, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, no, no, my name was always in the hat. That's for sure. Was it ever mentioned in sort of training and stuff like that? Because it it come to a stage when when we 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 didn't really want to get a penalty. Because we just didn't have feel like we had the confidence. Like if you look at some of the penalty saves, I think there was one at Mansfield when um, James Tilly literally what knocked it straight, and the keeper just does a little touch and it hits a crossbar. Was it was it ever mentioned, or was there extra training? Cause it, it's it's a confidence thing, isn't it? No, no, it got mentioned every day to them players, <laughs> every single day. <laughs> no, I think, I, I think as, as a school. I think that group last year was was like that, you know, and it was it weren't no elephant in the room. It got addressed, and is and sometimes that is the best way, you know. I think sometimes when you don't say anything, it's worse because 
you know everyone's thinking it, so you might <laughs> as well just say how it is. Um, and look, it, it is what it is like. If you don't want to take a penalty, don't take a penalty. But it, it builds resilience in them players, and I'm sure they use that throughout their career. Nick, I know we've got some quick fire ones when we change rooms. Um... Yeah, we do. I just had to say to you, I'm not sure there where you talk about you not celebrating when Ali used to score goals for us. I'm not sure if you're trolling me about what happened against Ipswich the other day, but Lee, we have to ask you, where do you stand on players celebrating goals against their former clubs? Now, I'm going to imagine that had you scored against Port... I don't think we actually played Portsmouth after you joined us, but had you scored against Portsmouth, I don't... I'm not sure if you'd have celebrated or not. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I think it would have been whoever the manager was in charge. (laughs) (laughs) Run over to the touchline. (laughs) Yeah, just leave it at that, I think. I think it's one of them. Okay, we won't dig dig into that one. Yeah, no, I don't know. Until you're in that moment, and I'll be honest with you, when I'm in that moment, anything could happen, so I'm not too sure myself. It was weird with Addy, because like... I didn't have a major issue with it. it. It did cause a bit of a stir where people celebrated or clapped him not celebrating, which is a weird one. Um, and yeah, sing his I'm name. Not... Sing his name was the, yeah, seemed a bit extra. I think, I think it's weird because with Addy, he was there for a year. We didn't really get a chance to say goodbye to him because he was out in the, he was out in Dubai, wasn't he? Was that right? In the, the yeah, yeah, he was there. Away, yeah. Um, and um, it's always one of those, isn't it? But um, yeah, I, I, I'm, a, I'm an old school fan and I think you celebrate goals. They're the hardest things to get, let's be fair. Um, so yeah, I, do you I, know what? You, you guys probably know Ali, but he's so he's such a good guy. Yeah. Honestly, he's such a good guy. He's probably one of the best pros I know. And I don't, I wish him nothing but success because he's such a good guy. And, and um, yeah, no, he's, do you know what? He's so respectful. And that's probably why he didn't. He's, he's ultra respectful. And it, it do not surprise me he didn't celebrate, if I'm honest. Yeah, I, I saw him before the game and just wished him luck and just said, please don't, please don't score, which was waste, wasn't it, within three minutes? Yeah, yeah, literally. Um, yeah, but no, I think you're right. Every, everything I had in with him was always respectful. Um, I, yeah, I think, he, and he and he generally enjoyed it at, at Wimbledon because he obviously had a lot of low moods. That's quite important, isn't it? Because I know you've had a few low moods in your early career. It's probably important yeah, to feel no. part of a club, isn't it? Very much so, and especially when he's never had a really run of games anywhere, really, or not to to the magnitude. That, um, no, look, I, I think it's always as a lone player or or. or he never really got going, you know, and obviously he come to to Wimbledon who they took a punt on him, really. I'd say they took a punt on him and it, it's worked out well for all parties. Now, Lee, I know that you're a big fan of the Nine Years podcast. I know you listen every week. You've got your subscription on Spotify, I think it is. So you'll be aware yeah. of our uh, of our game. My father was a John Joe O'Toole maker, where we'll give you three clues to try and guess the identity of a former Wimbledon player if you want to have a crack at this how old is this player going to be it's <laughs> a player that you would have played with in your time at Wimbledon oh okay yeah that's our link this week so it's play- the first clue is always a cryptic clue all right so good luck with this one but the first clue is he's not number 10 but he gets pecked repeatedly any ideas from that you can move us straight on if you want to Radoni? It's good, but no, it's not Jack Radoni. Um, this player started his career at Stoke City, made most of his appearances with Chester, just uh, off the M62. Chester? Mm-hmm. I was going to say Stu probably knows it, but I've already told Stu the answer, so of course... Yeah, do you know what? It's, it's great, <laughs> actually, that I know the answers because I'm absolutely rubbish on this. Have I got one more clue, have I? You have got one more clue. I'm not sure if it's going to help particularly, but he was a centre-half and uh, he was in our biggest away win in the Football League as AFC Wimbledon, so post-2002. Uh, he was sent-off. So our 5-1 win away at Appleton Stanley, he was sent-off, centre-half. Ben Hennigan. There we go. <laughs> Round of applause for Lee Brown. <laughs> Stu. Easy, isn't it? Stu, Lee's yeah. just showed you how easy this game really is. Okay, all right. You need to. Up I, the game. I would. I would have got that one to Chester. I would have got. Well, Chester. I, I remember when we signed. I actually him. didn't know that. But yeah. No, I didn't know. As soon as he said centre half, I just thought, oh, it's got to be in it. And if you didn't tell me I played with him, I would have been scrambled. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was it. 
Yeah. I remember when we signed Ben and um, Chester fans, were, like, I think they love him up there. I think some of the stuff he'd done there. So he was like really revered, revered, revered up there. That's the word. Revered, it? revered yeah. up there. Yeah. Um, with that. That 5 1 win, actually, that was really interesting. Any idea why um, Ayo South did the celebration like as if he was, uh, he picked up the corner flag, didn't he? Uh, I think it might have been week. before Lee's time with us. Or was it before Lee's time I think with us? So, yeah. What, was this, what game was this? The 5 1 at Accrington. No, that's the season we got relegated, though, wasn't it? Yeah, just yes, it was, yeah, in the December. No, uh, no, 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 it yeah. wasn't. Do you know what? It was the season before that, the COVID season, because I don't think any of us were there. Oh, was it? Yeah, there was no one in the ground. Cool. Well, Should like we move on to beans away? Um, right. Yes. Move on. So, some uh, to finish off. Then, Lee, we've got a few quick questions we'd like to ask you about your career. Uh, these can be in your time at Wimbledon or elsewhere. Start off with the best player you've ever played with. Adele Tura. Oh, what player? Yeah. How complex? Yeah. I know it's quick fire. How complex was he? Because I've got keep your mates uh, who just have. Next level, but the most arrogant bloke I've ever met in my life. <laughs> but no, but as a footballer, bloody hell, next level. Mad, wasn't it? Yeah. Best player you played against? Nathan Dyer. Personally, Nathan not who? not the best player overall. No. But one on one to me, Nathan Dyer. Where was he when you were playing against Swansea? Him? Swansea. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, best goal you scored? God, there's too many in there. <laughs> Probably one, a free kick at Portsmouth. We were 4-1 down at the time. Yeah, we were, down, we were 4-1 down at the time, but it was a good goal. <laughs> He'll count. <laughs> um, a match you'd rather forget? Any relegation game, the final take. Best manager you played under? Daryl Clark. What would you have done if you hadn't have been a footballer? Something within property of some ilk. Do you have any superstitions? I did when I was playing football, yeah, but not not outside of football, no. But in football? Every footballer's got their own little one. I'd have to have a coffee or I'd have to have a drink at a certain time and Nothing too crazy, but just little things like that, really. And I had my little routine before the game that I'd always do. What did that involve? Or can just you with the bands and stuff, just just with the bands, really doing my own sequence with the band. Right. Nothing nothing too exciting, I'll be, I'll be totally honest with you. Lee, I've got to ask a question. So I do these stadium tours, and I always use um, Jake Reed's shin pads as an example of, well, they're not even shin pads. No, they're my what? tongue off my boots. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously, you know you've been you've been in the game a long time. Could you have seen in the sort of like your early part of the career anyone wearing shin pads like that? You must, if you saw someone like that, you must go through them. I've never seen anything like it with it. it. His shin pad is the tongue off my off my boot. He was like, "Give me your tongue off your boot." Like, what? That's his shin pad. I was like, "You're off your head, you." <laughs> it's literally mental, isn't it? Yes, true, true. It's crazy. Apart from yourself, well, you can't. That wouldn't even make sense. This question by premise, prefacing it with that. But anyway, uh, who was the funniest player you've played with? Oh, there's a few of them. Mm -hmm. Harry Pell is up there. Okay. Ellis Harrison. Uh, Ellis uh, Harrison. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, there's a few. Tom Lockyer. He's funny. Okay. The Luke, Matty yeah. Taylor. No, there's a few. That Bristol group that we were with. When we got double back to back promotion, it had some really good characters and really, really good characters, um, which I've enjoyed over the years. Obviously, we wish Harry Pell all the best. Obviously, we, I thought you got injured early on at Cheltenham. Um, yeah. Was he Was he always like, if, I'm just trying to think like him and um, Ashley Bays in the same room together must have been an absolute, and to be fair, if you joined him as well, it would have been an absolute nightmare. What was he yeah, like? Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> Harry, 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 deep down, has got a, a, an amazing heart, which people probably don't see. They see the the pantomime villain on the on the Saturday, mm -hmm. which they see with everyone, you know. They probably see with yeah. themselves that Sat Ellis was the same. They see that, but deep down, away from all that, and away from all the bravado, and away from the lads, D 
there's some good hearts there. You know, there's really good hearts who, who would do anything for anyone. Um, but yeah, look, as a character on, on a day to day around the lab, it was brilliant and we've had some good times. I think the funniest thing I saw, I was fortunate enough to be down the train ground towards the end of the season and Harry Pell nicked um, John Joe O'Toole's red Adidas um, tracksuit bombs. And it's the only time I've seen John Joe at all probably lose it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you're right. Harry's got such a kind heart in terms of you just can't really be mad with him. I, it's one of those, isn't he? Yeah, no, no. He's a, he's a good guy. Um, I like him a lot, you know. And yeah, no, look, we got up to some good good stuff. And that's probably what you miss in the change room, especially I live for them sort of characters. I'll be honest with you, I, I, I like their energy. <laughs> I like their energy. And um, yeah, no, I think, I think the game is is losing more and more of them, if I'm honest. Um, and it's all so ultra-professional, which which is brilliant, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. If I was a manager, I'd, I'd want exactly the same. But um, I think it is losing them sort of characters, for sure. The only thing Harry Pell needs to improve on is his um, shooting during the warm-up. But we'll leave that one. <laughs> uh, best stadium you ever played at? Aside, Okay, let's, <laughs> let's eliminate Plough Lane and Fratton Park and the Memorial Stadium from this conversation. Other than those three, what's the best stadium you've played at? Uh, Wembley. Wembley's got to be up there. I've played there a couple of times. When would you have played there? Yeah, no, I've played there three, four times now. Three, four times in my career. I was lucky enough to play three, four times at Wembley um, for various clubs, so so Bristol and and Portsmouth. Of course, yeah. Nice. Uh, Worst stadium? Oh, at Korea. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> to be fair, that conference year when we went into the conference that year, there, there's some some howlers in there. There's some some bad ones. I think I remember going to Braintree away, and oh, yes. it was like the fourth game in, and there's people punching us in the back of the head in in the net because it, 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 all there was there was a little bar behind the <laughs> behind the thing. But yeah, I think there's a picture of some bald headed bloke punching punching someone in the back of the head through the net. Stuart, yeah, I told all, you all to stop yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> I think it was Stu. Do you know yeah. That's do you know what the like weird do you know what the weirdest thing is, right? When we when we started again, obviously started in Combine Counties, Braintree was a ground we were aiming to get to for luxury. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a big deal back in the day. Braintree away. Yeah, it's 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 mad when you think about it. I also I wonder how a Lee a young Lee Brown would have been in the Combine Counties. It would have there was oh, some sight, there was some there was some sights, trust me. In the, oh, I can imagine. Yeah, Noel Franklin and Danny Oakins, you'd have loved them. Um, <laughs> t- uh, two more quick questions then. Finally, in your career, which player was the longest in the shower? Um, Liam Lawrence liked a long shower. Stoke City, Liam Lawrence. Yeah, yeah fair enough. Was he at Mansfield, was he, before that? Am I got the right one? Yeah, Mansfield, yeah. 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 Uh, he's, proper, he's proper old school as well, isn't he, from what I remember of Liam yeah, Lawrence. Proper. Yeah, proper. Yeah, <laughs> proper. Fair play, Liam. And uh... just one quick question: We were talking about long. I'm being really cheeky. With the longest in the shower, change of, um, the baths in Plough Lane. There's a duck, um, a blue and yellow duck. I heard rumours that you would put it there. Or can, do you, can you enlighten us on that? Anything could happen. Do you know what I mean? I don't know who's put it there, but anything was happening at the time. You know, we have to have the nice <laughs> baths and just make it a little bit cosy. <laughs> I always get told it was you that put it in there. I mean, it's there I'll every... get the blame for everything. That's what you got to start realizing. It's I'm always my that. name. I'm thinking that. Who nuns in a bath? No, we don't have time for that. Right, last question, Lee. Um, when making a cup of tea, this is the important question, of course. No, we're never going to get away from this question. When you are making a cup of tea, does the milk go in the cup before you the water You ain't asking me the question. Surely you know the answer to this question. Well, I'm hoping I know the answer to this question, but we have to officially have it on record. Uh, we are still an unofficial podcast, of course, but we need an official answer to this question. 100%. All right. The milk goes in after the water. There we go. Thank you very much. That's <laughs> why you're a Wimbledon that, legend. Needs shooting. Well, we we, <laughs> okay. uh, we we had um so when James Shea played for us, obviously now at Luton in the Premier League, he actually said the opposite. Yeah. Um, and and yeah. within a within a couple of days, I think the, the, the dressing room had told him how wrong he was. Um, yeah, disgusting behaviour that is. <laughs> oh, bless him, James Shea. Never lived that one down. <laughs> um, Lee, as she said earlier, you are at Plough Lane on Saturday. Normally at this point, we do a sort of a preview and look ahead at the opposition. We don't want to give them much uh, 
airtime, to be honest with you. We're just going to skip straight to a scoreline prediction from you. Who won Wimbledon? Thank you very much. We will take that all day long. Lee, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us. No, thanks, gents. Really enjoyed it. Thank all you. We look, best. Forward to see- and we look forward to seeing you Saturday. Yeah, no, no, I'm looking forward to Saturday. No, that'll be good. Good day. Yeah, and all the best for your next steps, whatever comes next for you. Just time for me to say thank you to everyone for listening. Uh, Alexa Bliss, bag first, milk last. Two plus two plus four, and we shall speak to you again next week.